everyone, and welcome to our virtual cooking class series. This is class number three, charcuterie board 101, or as I like to call it, grazing board 101. Um, with me today is um, Chef Scott Tompkins as our moderator. I'm here. They let me and back in. They, they did let I'm you here. back in. Um, so he's still, still here, guys. Um, and a wonderful special guest, we have Bernice Reyes Sharp. Um, here to help us learn about cheese and to talk about cheese. She is actually a certified cheese professional, or is it specialist? Professional, professional um, which is almost like a sommelier of cheese. And so without further ado, I'm going to bring her over here to educate us about some cheeses and her favorite cheeses, and then we will get into making some boards. Welcome, Bernice. Come on in. Hi, my name is Bernice. Thanks, Charlotte, for introducing You're me. You're welcome. I am uh, the corporate merchandiser for Cheese Shop for Delhi. Um, I do training and merchandising for all the company, so uh, for all our partners and also all the products that we want to put on the shelf. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about some of my picks for the holiday season for also Chef Charlotte's uh, cheese and charcuterie board or grazing board that she's going to put together. But there's some of my favorite picks and some of the picks I want you to go look out for and ask our mongers about. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. I have about, uh, about seven of items that I want to talk to you about, but mainly about five of those are my favorite, favorite ones. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about, and, and I pick these things that are really kind of like crowd pleasers. You can't go wrong. Uh, customers uh, are customers that are like, no, I don't know about cheese. And so these are going to be things that I know that your family, your friends are going to be like, hmm, I like that you pick these things. They're kind of well-rounded. So Bernice, real fast, because I want you to explain a little more before you get into the cheese. We have uh, two chats. We have a chat. We have the question and answer. If you have a question, you can type in either one. I'm going to do my best. There's a lot of people on tonight to get to the questions as fast as possible, whether it's for Charlotte or for Bernice. But you, you, what you do for HTV is really cool. And I think people need to know more about like what exactly your training is, because everybody's familiar with mostly sommeliers, which is a wine expert. You are a sommelier for cheese. And there's eight of you at HEB that do this, and you travel around to all the stores literally training and merchandising all of our cheese mongers. But there's really, what your number is very rare, and what you do is very rare in the world, right? There's only, you said we a certain amount of people that actually know. A little over a thousand of us in, in the world that have, that have this certification. It's crazy. All over the world they come in to, to learn about from, you know, farm to table, all the things that need, you need to know about cheese from the animal to the breed, the feed, and the husbandry of how you take care of the animal for the environment and the terroir that that, that animal lives in in order to make cheese from milk. So to nerd out, basically, Bernice, can, you can taste or see a cheese and pretty much guess where it's from or the animal. That's pretty, that's up. Exactly. Right, that's, or at least I hope that I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe, you. I, yeah. I believe you. I believe you. There's just thousands and thousands of different cheeses yeah. in the world, and I hope that I can one day taste them all one day. So, Kelly said that's so cool. Absolutely. Super yeah. cool. Awesome. So today I wanted to, this is one of the, actually the staples of our cheese shop. And so with that is our one-year-age Wisconsin artisan cheddar. It's, it, it's, it could be aged up to three years old uh, for this particular cheddar. It does come in our, our white and our yellow cheddar. Um, all cheese is actually white. So wait a second. So, because I'm going to, I don't know a lot about cheese. I like to, I know what cheese I like to eat. Why? So you said that earlier we were talking, the cheese that's yellow versus the cheese that's white, all cheese is white. It's the same cheese, right? Basically, that age, if it's the same cut of cheese, why, why, do they make, why do they make it yellow? Like, why do they need to make it, why do they turn to color? Well, color e e equals flavor. Like, if you're thinking, oh, it has more fat in it, so that's what pe people think when they see color. They're thinking, oh, that has a lot more flavor in it. So we want, so a lot of the cheesemakers, long, long time ago when we started making cheese, when we were never born, uh, the farmers would add color or annatto, which is the natural food coloring to the, to the actual milk, and that would make the, the color of the cheese a little tinge that made it seem like, oh, it had more fat in it. That means you want to pay more for that cheese. Well, that makes sense because milk is white, so. Makes sense. The they only time it's naturally off color without the annatto is whatever the animal has been feeding on. So whatever the feed is, is what makes that color turn a different, like the beta carotene 
that's naturally in the milk of that animal. They want to know what the certification you hold is called, that that special certification. American uh, Cheese Society Certified Cheese Professional. So it's an ACSTCP. All right. Got that, everybody? Right now. There'll be a quiz later. So all the cheddar. Favorite. One of the things you can look and find anywhere in any HEB, really, that uh, you see fresh cut cheese in. Uh, another one of the staples at our cheese shop is the HEB Double Cream Brie. Um, we have it in this eight ounce round for those who like a, you know, like to cut it in different shapes and also want to do different things with it, bake it, put puff pastry, wrap it in charcuterie. Um, we also have it in our fresh cut version. So that is also, you know, something common. This is the fresh cut version. That means you're getting it fresh cut every day from our mongers in the size that you want it. Um, this is the double cream brie. The double cream brie is, uh, double cream means that it has 60% butter fat. Um, I did bring a triple cream brie with that, as for some people might have a question a little later on about what is a double cream, what is single cream, double cream, triple cream? And Bellatois is my pick for the triple cream version. Uh, this means it has 70, pu 70 plus percent butter fat um, in the actual uh, milk. They added more cream to it, make it more luscious. The more cream, the more butter, the more flavor of that butter pronounced. So what's really funny, is you say that's got you said the triple cream has 75 percent no 70, 70 plus so most of our most people look at butter when they buy butter like actual butter on the shelf are european style butters like 83 to 84 percent butter fat yeah. so that cheese is almost most butter <laughs> butter it actually when you have when you bring it to room temperature and you have you're cutting into it and you have that like third bite you are going to it tastes like the european butter that wonderful just i don't know it just makes you want more that umami is just fills your whole just so it's a tough. very so it's a very light cheese then this triple yeah. cream is super light something like it's more of a if you're in the diet like you want yeah. to see a light yeah, cheese yeah yeah yeah, way yeah to go. no, no worries it. about that so we could essentially take that cheese and we talked about it, like that would be great on a burger or like melt that over like a steak can you imagine just yeah melting it right into can i put whip that into mashed potatoes oh god yes oh my oh, god yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the Sorry. I just want to say this. This is also this is a you know this is a PG class. You guys are going a little so good, <laughs> so sexy. Cheese is my love is. language. <laughs> so those those two, uh, the double cream, HEB double cream, and the artisan are our own HEB stamp, meaning it's one hundred percent guarantee. You buy it, you don't like it, you bring it back, money money's back to you. But I'm going to guarantee you're going to love it. And then the double the, the Bella Trois, which many people ask us for the triple. Now the next one um, I wanted to talk to you about is our Emberico, Don Juan Emberico. This, I chose it because many people love Manchego, um, but I wanted to give you something a little different, which is uh, three parts of milk of one, 30, a third of a cow, third of sheep, and third of goat, which Manchego is made with sheep's milk. Typically, right? That's like the traditional Manchego. That's the only like way you can milk. make it with sheep's milk, with the Manchego sheep. That it, it's, it's a uh, PDO, means a protected designation origin. That's the recipe. No one can make that other than in Spain and with those sheep. But this here is in Spain as well, but it is three parts. So it's a little bit more, uh, so people are like, oh, I don't know about the, the lanolin from the sheep. Um, but I want it to be, I love cow's milk because it's more approachable. I, um, or, and then the goat's milk. Oh, I like goat, but I don't like the fresh goat. I like something else other than that. So for vegetarians, because we talked about this earlier, it's vegetarians can also eat cheese. And we have, you said we have tags in our cheese shop that actually show where they're using animal rennet versus vegetable rennet, right? We and or microbial about this, rennet. People just, I don't think people know that at all. I didn't yes. know that. Okay. Absolutely. If you're a vegetarian and you're looking for the right cheese um, and you're staying away from anything that's animal, um, you're going to look for microbial and or vegetable rennet on the tag and also on the uh, scale labels and on the repack labels that we have on the cheese that identify the cheese, they also will state that type of rennet. That's good information. Awesome. Yeah. So with that, this is a great crowd pleaser. Um, 33, uh, three parts of the milk, cow, sheep, and goat. Um, and for you who like Manchego, this is going to be one of those new so, things. Bernice, there's a lot of people that want to know every single. So when you guys, when you switch places, they want to know every cheese you're using because they want to know which one it is. So just make sure they're wanting to know, like, what was that cheese again? What was that cheese again? So would you do them? Just call them out. I'm and I to do type believe them, we have the cheeses. <laughs> um, we do have pictures um, to identify the cheeses. Yes. So we do have, we have the yes. whole shopping list on um, e-commerce. 
And so that way you can go back and reference each of these and also shop them curbside um, and or for delivery. So if quick question, real quick. You, would you say that that Iberico cheese is more firm than the cheddar? It's, you know, they're almost, they're, it's actually going to be a little softer than the cheddar. Okay. Because the cheddar is aged longer than okay. this one is. And not only that, because the mixtures of milk make it kind of a wonderful combination of everything that those milks bring together, the creaminess, the nuttiness, the, the texture is also has that agedness to that. Okay. So you're, you're going to want, this is going to be a perfect blend. Manchego is a great cheese for like gourmet mac and cheeses when you're really trying to like spice, spice it up. Manchego is a great cheese to kind of add in there along with your easy melt. It just gives it a really good flavor. Yeah, and it's right. something new. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're all used to being cheddar or uh, Fontina uh, or Gouda. And so that leading into that is we do have an exclusive line of Goudas that we're offering at HEB. You cannot get this anywhere in the country right now underneath this brand name. And so even at HEB, you, can, you don't have this luxury of going to Central Market and getting, getting these four uh, different types of uh, Goudas. So I wanted to introduce them to you today because they've just launched um, just in the past couple of months. And I think that because of COVID, we're not able to uh, do some samplings. And so it's harder for us to introduce these to you. And with that being said, I wanted to do it live for you today so you can go looking for them. And so with that, I have Two are, they called Family and Island out of Holland. This is an exclusive uh, family, a uh, cheesemaker family that is making them for us. Um, you have the Carmelo, which is sweet and creamy, which is aged seven months. You have your uh, Essentrique that is buttery and smooth, that is aged five months, so it's going to be a little bit um, softer. And then you have where I actually, I was very quite surprised, and everybody who tastes this uh, cheese is amazed by how wonderful this honey goat is, the honey goat and the honey cow. The honey goat is a little bit more elegant, a little bit more, a bit of sweet, whereas the honey cow is gonna be a little bit more richer because of the cow's milk and with that sweet. Um, the honey in itself is on the outside of the rind, so as it ages, it's going to penetrate into the rind as it's sitting there and is going to go into the flavor of that Gouda. Um, so you can see the differences in the color and you can tell automatically the color is the, the, the lighter yeah, one is the goat different. and the darker one is cow's it's milk cow, yeah. I just so, wanna, we're, we're, I, there's a, a lot going on in the chat right now and there's a lot of uh, a lot of cheese love um d benson said triple cream uh in my sunday eggs with my mimosa to another takes my mimosa to another level uh i love honey goat yum love the honey cow i'm gonna try it tonight i have the rind there's a lot you're getting a lot of love on the uh the cheese I love D. Benson's love thing is like what you were talking about, that fat, yep. and to cut it, I mean, you're going to be talking about that even more so with the charcuterie, is on. when you put that nice Prosecco or Cava or Champagne, the bubblies with this one here. We have a question. What is the difference oh. in taste from goat to cow? The biggest difference like in a... In a Tanginess, like the fresh, tangy, lemony is from the, cow, it's from the goat, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, and the cow is going to be more rich, luscious like um, comforting, um, just like well-rounded on your palate. Um, so a little sharper, she called sharper. the cheese comforting. It, <laughs> it is. is comforting. It is actually very there comforting during this time of actually holidays. It's going to be, you know, yeah. great addition. I feel to very it. validated right now, Bernice. I just want you to know Thank that. You. Yeah. Thank you. So those are the cheeses I, I have my picks of, that I wanted to present today. So any questions you have, um, Send them over to uh, the both of us, Chef Scott, Chef Charlotte, and myself, and we'll be here throughout the session to uh, talk about the whatever it is you like to talk about, cheese and charcuterie Bernice, and crazy the best. Yeah, you, crazy I love the fact that you, you train all this. So if anybody, if there's a lot of cheese love in the chat right now, and there's I, what I want to say is that Bernice, uh, as being a specialist, being a certified specialist, is a person that literally you got to train people so like if you're intimidated about cheese you don't need to be right they can ask you you yeah. can ask your local cheesemonger about what they need to do with what and they'll 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 hook you up right there they have the knowledge one day in my life i was intimidated like everyone else and i said i looked at the cheese and i said cheese needs some love and i want to learn all about it so i can teach others about it and so that's where i was a newbie at my at one time and now uh, i'm a curd nerd as they would say a curd so, nerd. <laughs> Curd I protect the nerd. cheese. These are orphans <laughs> until they can go home into our customers' baskets. 
I want to be a curd nerd. How do I do that? I got to know more. I don't know enough about cheese. What are you going to do? So um, I'd like to uh, send it over to now to uh, Chef Charlotte. Thank you so much for having you, me Bernice. today and everyone else. And uh, use the cheeses as, um, at your I'm will. I'm very excited. And um, I actually learned quite a bit. And I'm super, super um, glad that you're here. And I can bet that from this little, little taste um, that we'll probably have you back and way more um, stuff to do with cheese. Um, so now that we've got a little bit of cheese education and a little bit of foundation, let's go into um, building our accompaniments for our cheese boards. And then what we'll do is we'll actually go into building those boards. Um, Y'all, all this cheese. Charlotte, I have a question even... that's both yeah. for you and Bernice. Go uh, ahead. Because I, I only I say uh, Charlotte is a sparkling wine fanatic, oh, um, yes, champagne. Yes, yes, yes. Which one did you say to partner with the bubbly or which ones can you partner with bubbly? Like which ones go specifically with if you're doing like a mimosa or bubbles, like which is a great one to use? I would say from the, from the selection that I have there, are gonna, it's going to be the triple cream brie, the um, double cream brie. And also, if you're thinking kava, you remember, you're going to be thinking what grows together, goes together. Yes. So if it's Spanish cheeses, of course, I also say the... Um, the younger the cheese, the lighter the wine. The older the cheese, the darker the wine. So that's kind of like a general rule in the industry of how just to keep it simple. I like it. So that, uh, so Sabrina, did that, did that answer your question? Hopefully, that was a good. And uh, Bernice is actually on that. You're in the chat. Yes. So she's going to answer questions. If you have questions during it, she can kind of answer them live and do it as Charlotte's kind of putting this together. So Charlotte, can I brag on you for just a second? Go right ahead. Um, I know you're gonna hate that. The uh, so we have done probably I don't know how many, probably close to thousands of events now from uh, large events like Austin Food and Wine Fest. We've done all Absolutely. kinds of uh, smaller events uh, for you know uh, anything and anything they tell us to do. So we really have like events of eighteen thousand to basically ten people, and I think at pretty much ninety nine percent of these events we've done, there's yeah. always been some sort of some sort of charcuterie board. Um, I like the fact you called it a grazing board because that's really like over the past four or five years we've done these. That's really what you've created is more grazing boards. They're not, it's not one style. And you're going to show everybody right now like Absolutely. the difference so, in all the. Yes, so grazing boards. So typically like charcuterie, you know, I guess Food Lovers Companion would say charcuterie is, is a cured meat of pork and, you know, offal, right? So, um, or, it, or it's French, right? So I like the term grazing board because it's a little more... Um, open-ended and less, less you know, restrictive less restrictive <laughs> and also like a, 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 a grazing board can be anything it could be all pastries all desserts it could be breakfast it could be waffles it could be you know anything really right, uh, Miriam Miriam would like to know what juice you just poured in there so what juice um, are you doing? great question so actually right now what I'm doing is I'm actually making a spicy spicy citrus jelly or really it's just a reduction and this is going to be a really 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 great um, addition or component to our board because it's going to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of like acid, and a little bit of sweet that's going to balance with all of these cheeses and, of course, that super salty fattiness from some of those meats. So I'm adding some lime juice, and I'm going to add some lemon juice to this. So we're going to do like a cup and a cup, right? And I'm actually using the like fresh squeeze stuff, which is like... Why would you not? It's yeah, fresh squeeze. Because, you know, but if stores. you want, you could obviously juice all the lemons, and there's nothing wrong with that um, either way. But also, you know... Lemons, limes. Also, did you know you could freeze that stuff? I didn't know you could freeze that stuff until the other day. I'm also going to take some actual lemons, and I'm using Meyer lemons, but again, any other lemon um, would work. This actually, you could substitute any citrus, right? So if you wanted to do grapefruit, do grapefruit. If you wanted to do, to the season you know, for blood yep, orange. Right? So the, what I love, I love using Meyer lemons. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. Meyer lemons, the skin is a little bit sweet. So you can actually eat the skin of the Meyer lemons. I used to do it all the time when I was feeling uh, down, like you feel like you need a little shot of uh, vitamin C. It's really, really good. And it's, it's sour like a lemon, but the, the skin is just slightly sweet. Yes. It's a really nice. It's great for what she's using it for. So in my mind, like a Meyer lemon, like if I were to close my eyes right now and think of a lemon, Meyer lemon, like that's the flavor that I think of, right? That's the flavor that comes to mind. All right, so I'm adding this into this pot, right? So the juices go in there, and then I'm going to take some sugar, and I'm going to do about a cup and a quarter, a cup and a third, and I'm literally going to, like, Rachel Ray this and eyeball it because I don't have a measuring cup. But, meh, 
Let's see. Meh. Okay, right? So that's about good. Good Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this on the stove and I'm going to bring it to a simmer for about 20 minutes. Um, really what we're looking for is this really dark, rich, caramelized color and also um, like thickening, right? So we want to reduce it by half. So I'm going to throw this back here. Yeah, because there's natural pectin in the juice, not the juice, in the lemons. Yeah. And as you cook it down, obviously, when you cook sugar in a syrup, obviously, the water's going to evaporate. You'll eventually get, it'll be a little thicker. I'm going to play the game of where is the spoon? Oh, here we go. All right. It's the I'm last give place this. you put it, Jeff. Always the last place you put it. It's all right. So going to stir this up. And Tompkins, you have to watch my pot. All right. You got it. I'm okay. socially distant, but I'll watch for bubbles. There Jeff. you go. So while it. that is doing a thing, we are going to make our next accompaniment for our board. And I'm a really big fan of this one. So this one's actually kind of like twofold, does two things. It's sort of um, a giftable recipe, but also a really fantastic thing to just add to a board. And we're going to make some marinated olives and feta, right? So this is really, really simple, guys. So you're just going to do a really, really good quality um, olive oil. I'm using Ottavio olive oil. You're going to use a Castile Vetrano olive. Um, I'm using the Asaro ones. I love these olives. These olives are like, they're yeah, like the yeah. un-olive olive. They're yeah, like. Slow down on the olives because a lot of people don't like olives. Okay, well. Because they may have had the wrong olive variety. There you go. Okay. Um, these olives are very smooth, very silky. They complement the cheese very well, but they, like I say, the un-olive olive, right? So they're very, very buttery. They're not as pungent and, and astringent as Salty, a calamata or briny as a calamata, yep. but not as tin canny as a black olive. Does that they're make sense? Sicily, they're delicious. They're my right? favorite. You have to try them. Right? So Absolutely. this is just, you know, a regular old block feta. I've cut it up into one inch cubes. Um, super easy. And so the recipe actually calls for one pound. So the recipe that you guys can find online is um, scaled up for giftables. I'm going to cut this recipe in half simply because I'm just going to throw this in a little bowl on our board. Um, so if, I don't have, if I don't like feta cheese, because I think it smells mozzarella. like Mozzarella. Great question. Mozzarella. Great question. I love feta. I'm saying somebody may think it smells like feet. I don't think it smells like feet. It's not why, like why? super blue cheesy. It's a little, well, you know, I guess it depends, I mean, on, hey. your, depends on your feet, I guess, right? Right. So I'm I call also... it the feet of the gods. <laughs> the what? Go. The feet well of the gods. The feet of the gods. There we go. So I'm also going to take some lemon rind. And I mean, you could zest this with a microplane if you want, but I like these really big, beautiful pieces of lemon rind. And I'm also doing those Meyer lemons. God, they're so, God, they smell so good. I wish we had smell vision all right. Smell the citrus. Smell it. So good. All right. Now, I'm actually going to put this. Should I put it in a jar? Y'all want to see it go into a jar? Y'all want to see yeah, me do the thing? Yeah, I want to see how you gift it because I'm not. All right. I, we're going to do a giftable real quick. Marinated olives and. I'm going to get some gloves. I really feel like everybody should have kitchen gloves, like food prep gloves in their house. Sure. I hate touching um, slimy things like raw chicken. So these are super great. <laughs> I love touching all the raw stuff. Uh, you know, that checks out. That checks out. <laughs> All right, so I got these cute little uh, quilted ball jars, mason jars at H-E-B. You can get a, like a, I guess it comes in a dozen. Not quite sure. And literally, y'all, I mean, this is how easy it is. I'm just going to, like, pack these guys in here, right? <gasps> do, do, okay. do. Pack it in, pack it in. In fact, I'm going to come over closer so you guys get a better view. Can y'all see? And the great thing about, like, what she's doing here is obviously there's, this is a way to be customizable. And if you want to make it spicy, yeah. you could add some red pepper flakes. She's adding Absolutely. some rosemary. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to put rosemary. I'm going to put that lemon zest like this. Cute little giftable. And I know everyone's saying, let's get to the boards. Let's get to the boards. I'm going to add this yes, guy. Yes, Tasha, thank you. Feta is pungent smelling, but it doesn't taste like it. It's so good. She said, so, so in all caps, good. Oh, 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 good. All right, yes, so good. I put a sprig of rosemary, and now I'm putting a sprig of thyme in there. If you don't like thyme, don't use thyme. Not a big deal. Um, question for you yes. from Joe would be, how long does the giftable last? How long will it last in the fridge? So that is a really great question, Joe. So um, like up to like three or four weeks, you can keep it in there, right? You just want to make sure that like, um, you should know that if you put this in the refrigerator, the olive oil will like solidify, right? And you just would put it out room temperature and the olive oil will go back to um, its liquid form. So now I'm just going to take this like this, like da, 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 and I'm going to fill it up with this olive oil. Look at that beautiful virgin color. Olive oil. 
extra virgin olive oil. I, I know, no kidding. I probably go through a bottle a week. Oh my God, I could I drink like olive oil. I could drink it. I could drink it. I could drink it. And uh, then. Yes, D. Benson. Uh, the, where'd it go? It, it's so fast, it just disappeared from the chat. The Bulgarian feta is the bomb. If you have that, Ooh, in the Bob that's Renzo, like briny. And right? Is that French? Bernice yeah. used the term tangy to tangy. describe. I'm like, it's kind of like musty. <laughs> Bernice well, actually, I tried that. that. I, I love the both of them because it's very surprising in the fact that they're also, sometimes with feta, I mean, you're going to get that crumbliness from yeah. them. But with these two, you're going to get that creaminess as well. So um, I love the, the Bulgarian and the French Valbresco are great items too, to buy. Sharon, I'm going to give you my opinion on the best brand of olive oil, and then we'll ask uh, Charlotte and Bernice what theirs is. I love the Cillian unfiltered extra virgin it's not everywhere it's called rustico unfiltered extra virgin olive oil they make an organic a regular and i believe they make a, another kind they make an organic it's a green and just a, it's a yeah. very bright green olive oil i use it on everything and it's a little bit of sediment i think throws people off that's my favorite that's just me personally i love that olive oil i love it too um, that's my favorite too boom okay bernie it's up to you that, yeah well, what's your i'm favorite? gonna say olive. that is one of my favorites as well but i tried this one from oh. el Fortetto down in uh, uh tuscany and i would I don't know. I mean, that's 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 the second one. The, that my first one is the El Fortetto that we cannot have here at HB yet. We get it in a, during Chow Italia, but that yeah, you're right. The Bernice, Resto brand is amazing. You need to use your pull to get that here. Right? Uh -oh. Come on, Bernice. I'm, I'm gonna do what I can. See, look, it's a little giftable. Um, Arnold asks, can you use red wine vinegar to it as well? I love red wine vinegar Absolutely. and all the stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the good thing about. Um, I always use recipes as um, sort of a guideline, like, oh, a suggestion, really. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Like when you're driving, there's a yellow line and a white line, and you just want to stay somewhere in between those lines. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't. That's a terrible <laughs> reference. Um, so there it is. There's a cute little giftable. You could also take this um, directly, this jar directly, and put this directly on a board, and it's, abs it's like ready to go, right? Or so directly packaging. in your mouth with a fork. So... Since I say that, right, you could put it directly onto a board. I want it like, we have tons of different board varieties, um, the kitchen and table varieties at HEB. And this is one in particular, which I think is really kind of like spectacular. So it has the really beautiful slate top, but underneath it has all the cheese knives. Like, can y'all see that? Do you, so do you have to... And wait, hold on. Look, look how wonderful. Like, what a <laughs> gift. It's got a secret compartment. Like, what a <laughs> gift. I just think this is the best gift. I'd be so thrilled. I'm so, yeah, so give me that gift. Yeah. Give me you, that gift. So, like, every, usually charcuterie boards are built on boards. But, like, yeah. can you, do you, if you don't have a, so I'll use myself as an example. I have a bunch of beat up boards that I've cut on, and I don't want to present them in front of people. What else could I put my shark? What else could I build my charcuterie board on? So typically, when I build um, a board, I like to do it on either like slate or a white platter or any type of cutting board. Um, and the rustic beat up wood is great. It adds to the whole aesthetic of building a board. So I think that's a great question. Thank you for not hating on my board. I don't typically like to use something that has a lot of design on it, um, simply because I like the um, the food to be the main player, right, to, to take center stage. So when you're building a charcuterie board, by yes. the way, I don't think a lot of people realize that charcuterie, I think when people think of charcuterie, you'd automatically think Italian, but charcuterie is actually a French It's word. actually French, right? Yes. And so it's, it's literally anything, right? It's kind of you're building a physiology of taste, so to speak, yes. on a board. So like, yes. and, and the way you do it, and I, I, I want to call you uh, out on this for being a person who really, like, can you call it a, a uh, grazing board? It's mm -hmm. literally anything that makes sense, and it's different textures, colors, yes. sharpness, sweet, so salty, acid. Yes. Like, break it all down, girl. So one of the fundamentals of building a board is variety, right? And you want variety of texture. You want variety of flavor. You want variety of color. And I always like to do a variety of height, right? So um, I like things to be some small things, some big things, and I like to pile things up really, really tall, right? Um, I also like to use, like, Another, I guess, tip that I tell people a lot is the um, rule of odds. So I do everything in odd numbers, right? So um, three different types of cheeses, three different types of meats, and then five different accompaniments, like three to five accompaniments, right? So your accompaniments can be pickles, right? Something pickled. It could be, um, 
you would add something crunchy, right? So a bread or a cracker. You would add something sweet, um, like a chocolate or... Yes, I was going to say, yeah. do or don't. Is chocolate a do or don't on a charcuterie? Cho for me, chocolate is a do every time, anytime, all the time. Chocolate and cheese are like a match made in heaven. And like the bitterness of a chocolate goes really, really well with um, like the fattiness or the saltiness so of... So ever, yeah. ever a white chocolate or a milk chocolate? Uh, so I'm not a white chocolate fan. Glad you asked. But um, it's, not, it's not the cheese for me or the chocolate for me. It's really just... Fat, but Milk chocolate's my favorite. I know, it is, it is. All right, so let's get into this board, all right? Let's get into this board. So the meats that I've chosen today to use are going to be, I'm using a dried sausage. It's Mike's Recipe, semi-hard sausage. It's an H-E-B product. I think it's fantastic. I'm going to grab these products so you guys can see what I'm using, so right? the graphic back up. There was some call for, can you please put the graphic back so, up, what we're talking about. I'm using this guy right here because I think he's fantastic. This guy, can you see him? I'm going to use a slice of prosciutto, and then not a prosciutto. I'm going to use a peppered salami. Okay, so go ahead as, as you take me through this, because yeah. obviously you, we all have our talent, so this is mm -hmm. not mine. Um, how do you best fold the meats to the to where they will sit on? They stay with me. Because I roll everything up mm -hmm. like a cigar, and that's just not as uh, mm -hmm. aesthetically pleasing on a board mm -hmm. to have everything rolled up similarly like I uh, think that's a cigar. great question. So, again, when I say I like to build things in mounds, like, there's something said about, you know, like... Show me a simple technique. I'll for show those you a simple... You're gonna, it's going to blow your mind. Are you ready? <laughs> are you all ready? Brace, brace yourselves. I need to put my helmet on. So, this is the slice of brisada. All you do is you take it and you fold it in half like a hot dog. And then you fold it in half again, like a hamburger, and you get these cute little... Well, now I feel silly. Okay, well, you should. I'm well, just kidding. There's no silly <laughs> questions, Tompkins. Well, so you're stacking them up so they yep. look like a pretty accordion. You can do them in Absolutely. different ways to kind of stack Absolutely. them up. Yeah. And so the, I learned something. It is, right? So the cheeses that I'm going to use today, I'm actually going to use the, um, the brie, and I'm going to use the um, double cream H-E-B brie that um, is in the nice little eight-ounce round because Bernice made a great point about cutting it into your own shapes. And I want to cut this into wedges. I'm going to use the Iberico cheese. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rind off this one. OK, I have to ask Bernice. Um, I cut the rind off of it because A, I don't, you know, people don't know what to do with the rind. And also, I don't want to pick it up from my, all over, like where people stash it all over my house. So it's can you time, eat the sorry, rind of this? One time. It was a party. <laughs> one time. I would suggest uh, for that. To it used to be that you were able to eat that rind. Yeah. It was a natural rind. And now it's uh, for the fact that we were wanting, you know, a long time ago, wanting to age that cheese further. Um, and also for preservatives, they do add a preservative to the outside, which is an inedible rind. So aesthetically, it looks pleasing on, the, on your grazing board. Okay. And you want, and people identify that cheese or the region of where that cheese came from, typically by the rind. Okay. And or can identify the type of family that it's from or categorization that it's from typically from the rind so okay you, you if you wanted to add to the beauty of the the board okay then keep the rind on but if you're really worried about if your uh, customers or your family members are yeah. going to be upset that they eat the rind then just take it off okay you know it doesn't matter all right well then Charlotte, we have a question from arnold go ahead he would like to he would said we have to point out when slicing meat after having the refrigerator after two days, the meat oxidizes and will turn color. What do you have as a tip for that? That's a really good question. It is and a good question. I would just say eat it faster. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Don't let eat it, it too long. Eat it, it faster. Um, but I think it's the matter of the um, the the protein, the meat being exposed to the air, um, and so I guess limiting the amount, the like the open air. The contact, right? So, like maybe pressing that plastic wrap onto it um, really tightly, but also I'm um, going back to just eat that. Yeah, build it, eat it. That's what I mean. That's what. That's we, a really uh, good question. I, 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 I hope that was a good. And to be honest with you, Arnold, um, in all the events that we've done, typically when we're planning for really large events here, and we do things, and we've got a, we have, we do a lot of prep that takes you know weeks in advance to do a lot of things that, you, that will keep and be fine um, from just a health perspective, um, you know, food safe perspective. The uh, for charcuterie boards, usually those are always built about a day in advance, and that's about it. So everything stays nice and colorful. So I would say that's probably the best tip 
Uh, just like she said, just yeah. build it, build it before, right before you plan on using it. So like night before, if you're having a party or whatever, best time to maybe throw it together. So I'm doing an unboxing of the Brie. Unboxing. It is heavy. It is, no, I'm just kidding. So here is this beautiful. All right, they're asking Brie, Iberica, which other cheeses are you going to use? I am going to use this. Okay, I have a question, Bernice. So I have a little like discoloration on the cheese. Is this a normal thing, Bernice, for the brie? Um, for that particular brie, uh, that's great that you brought that out. I was wanting you to use the other one, but that Darn one it, I ruined <laughs> yes. everything. Uh -oh. But yeah, She's it's so uh -oh. mad at me. <laughs> Let me tell you, the French would love it to be nice, ooey gooey. So and then a it's just bit. aged itself. Uh, it's uh, super aged that okay. one. Okay. So, but you don't want it to be a uh, ammo like super it excessive smell ammonia. It doesn't like ammonia. Yeah, it doesn't if, it's, if it's, there's any black okay. uh, mold on it, then on a fresh cheese, and I'm speaking in general, fresh yeah. cheeses, you probably want to tend to not use that cheese. We just had a what not to do moment, a yes. teachable moment, and I um, love it. Yes. So yes. Martha that had being a tip said. For, Martha had a tip for Arnold on the, she said, spritz the proteins with light oil and water, spray then saran wrap the suckers, and then place into freezer grade Ziploc soft oxidation. Yeah. We, have, we have tried that, Martha, too, sometimes. Um, the only thing, our only thing with that is that sometimes it also uh, mm. messes with the eating experience for mm. some people. Some people say, so that's, a great, that's a great tip, so thank you yes. for sharing. Okay, so the cheeses that I've chosen, so we're going back to the large wedge of the brie because I'm a really big fan of this brie, and it's a very, like, you know, approachable cheese. I'm going to use the, um, the honey goat because um, I'm going to add a goat cheese to the mix. I'm going to do the Iberico cheese that I've sliced into wedges, and I went ahead and took off the, the top part of the rind and the bottom, if you guys noticed, and then just as some filler, right, so I cut this into um, some small triangles. This is going to be that aged um, Wisconsin cheddar, the white one. If you want to do something with a little more color, like if you wanted to add some, like, you know, color difference, you would go ahead and add, um, use that the orange cheddar, but I think this is so great. And I'm gonna use this to sort of fill in some gaps and sort of give some variety of, um, you know, visuals. Somebody had brought up earlier, like, flavored cheeses. Okay. This for probably both you and Bernice, Charlotte, is the, like, the horseradish cheeses, the Chipotle yeah. cheeses, like, acceptable, good on these kind of things to pair with some of those more, like, I would say, fancier cheeses, like, good, good to have as a mix of that, or is that Oh, like absolutely. I mean, if you, even with these meats, these different types of meats that you have, like, Horseradish is wonderful, like with a nice, uh, if you have like a roast beef on your grazing table or anything like that, that has a, a meatier, fattier pockets in the charcuterie. Yeah. Um, uh, it's going to give it that nice, a uh, little bit of spice to it, but it's going to bring out the flavor overall add it, and add to it. The, you know, any addition of spice and flavor, um, you just want it to marry well with what you're serving. Um, and if you want to taste it, make sure you're just not pairing things that are, are going to offset each other. Like they're just, you know, don't overpower each other. Charlotte Perla asks, can you show how to cut the whole brie even though it won't be used so we know how to cut it? You're going to leave it whole, right? So for the whole brie, what I was going to do, so let's just say that this was going to be our brie. I was going to cut it into wedges and I was probably going to cut about eight wedges um, from that because I wanted to like pile it up and give some variety or texture so to. Like a finger food, they could just yep. grab it and absolutely, a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, what I'm gonna do instead, so we're just gonna shift, which is no big deal. Um, I'm, I've got that beautiful brie. I'm gonna place the brie in the center and I've actually taken that honey goat and it actually was, it looked like, uh-oh, pieces of a puzzle. How did it go, guys? Ah, <laughs> there we go. And I went ahead and cut it in half on the bias, right? Because what I'm looking for, again, is that um, variety in shape and um, sort of texture, but also I want some height on my board. You don't want everything to just be flat, right? So I went ahead and done that. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and add my um, Iberico in a minute and of course my cheddar. So I'm also gonna, sometimes when I build a, build a board, I like to use an anchor piece or something like where I start. So like a point of reference. So um, I'm using these cute little bowls um, right here. I picked these up at a garage sale, but this is an opportunity for you guys to like bring out some of your fun little like you know, finger bowls or whatever, anything really goes. So I'm going to take this bowl and I'm going to put the bowl between, I'm going to create some, you know, space between this cheese and the brie itself. Would you call it negative space? Yeah. I think you would call it <laughs> negative space. I, I think that I'm really impressed, Tompkins. It's an inside joke. Um, we talk about plating food a lot. Negative space. Negative space. I like, I like negative space. Right. 
Um, so then I'm actually going to take another bowl, right? So this uh, maybe, let's say I'll use my feta, and I'll put my feta over here. So now where did you get that string? Where do I find that string? Oh my gosh, this is 34th and Main. You can get this at HEB in the seasonal department, along with these street. like darling like, napkins. And Main. I'm sorry, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> That's the brand. Got That's it. the brand. But it is yes. HEB. You yes. Probably, okay. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to start building. I've got an anchor piece. I've got, I've got one cheese. I've got this one. And this is the cheese where I would probably add a knife like this to sort of like, you can sort of, you know, make nuggets or sort of crater out. Um, now I'm going to add, so I'm going to start to add um, the, the, folded, the folded meat. Thank you for showing me. You're welcome, Tompkins. If I'm and the I'm, only one that got something out of that, it'll have been worth it. You know it. what? If, if, I, a, if I helped one person, then that's enough for me. <laughs> So again, I'm going to use the, the rule of odds or the rules of threes, and I'm going to make these like these little piles, right? So I'm going to start with the peppered. I think it's if you salami. Like, and I'll use myself as an example. I think it's when you look at a lot of charcuterie boards, especially the ones, even the ones we sell at HB, like there's there can be a lot of intimidation in creating your own. It just seems like oh, yeah. well, I don't want to go through. I don't know how to care at all. Like I don't. I don't think. I think that the thing you're trying to to convey is it doesn't matter how it lays. You're showing up. You're kind of showing this as the canvas, and you kind of do with it what you want to do. Exactly. And here's some great flavor profiles on what to match it the with. There really is yep. no wrong way unless I'm building it, and then there's a definite wrong way. No. You've, I've seen them. They're beautiful. So then I'm going to take this Iberico, and I'm just going to sort of put them like that, and I'm going to put them over here. And it's okay to move things around a little bit. Great question, Priscilla. It says, if we get fresh meat from the deli, what's the ideal thickness for cut meat? It kind of depends, right, on what you've got. That's a great question. So, um, depends. Are you going to cube it, or are you going to do, like, the like sliced meats like Thin this? Thin sliced, yeah. Thin there's sliced. There's certain meats, Priscilla, that, like, you don't want to cut, like, the prosciutto on a tin, unless you want to cube it, because it's pretty, you know, it's chewy, it's very chewy. Same thing with, like, some of the capicolas. You want to thin them. You want to slice them really thin. I would say like on a one or we can do a yep. half, right? Half is a half is like a I would half say setting. yeah, you could do a one for the thicker the the pockets in the meat. What you're going to notice is you want to cut it super thin. Yeah, you're going to get a lot more for your money. That's good. Um, yeah, and you you're thinking oh prosciutto is like super expensive, but let me tell you, really the way that it's supposed to be cut is super paper thin, translucent, and yep. so when it goes on your tongue, it's like butter and it melts. Yep, more for your money. Yep. Did it help, Priscilla? Great question. So now I'm going to add in this um, this semi-hard like dry sausage, and this is on you. I picked this one up on um, the snack and chip aisle, so it's with the beef jerky. I'm a, I, it's really neat, and it makes these really great bite-sized pieces. And again, if you've noticed, so I've got my three cheeses, I've got a little one for filler, I've got my two meats, and now I'm going to add in the third meat, right? So I'm going to take this one, and I'm just going to nest it right around this bowl right here. And then I'll take some and maybe I'll put it over here on the other side of um, the Anne cheese. Anne wanted to know, Anne oh. asked, what meat pair best with the cheeses you're using or does it matter? So it actually really doesn't matter. Um, Bernice made a, rate, a great point um, where like goes with like, right? So if it's from the same region, they absolutely go with each other. So those sausages, um, is, the, is the one you have there is a little smoky? But then you've got like salami, it's a little yep, salty. Yep, yep. So now, um, so I've got, so... Salami, I've got a little pepper. Um, the, this one is a smoked sausage, so it's that smokiness um, is really nice. And really it's like, it's what I tell people when they're, when they're drinking wine um, or you know, beer. It's like, if you like it, then buy it and eat it, right? Um, because ultimately, like, the point is to enjoy it, right? All right, Lacey asked a question. What is the biggest mistake you see on charcuterie boards? Uh, so, that is a great question, and Bernice and I just had this question, and I'm glad that you asked. I'm going to grab some chocolates over here and some nuts. Um, the biggest is that if you just have cheese on your board and you still call it a charcuterie board because charcuterie denotes some sort of meat, right? Correct. Um, the other biggest mistake that I see is that people don't, um, they just sort of take the meat out of the package and they just slap it on the board, right? And that's just like... You know, again, you eat with your eyes, and it should be exciting, and it should be, you know, it should be beautiful, right? Priscilla asked the question. Go uh, ahead, are Priscilla. Are all these items specific to the deli area or throughout the aisle? No, so that's a great question. Um, I cherry-picked HEB this morning, and I found, like, the items that I loved the most and the things that I was, that I thought would make very interesting and um, that weren't all very, you know, very expensive. They're, you know, a variety of costs. So I found 
these little guys, which are like some sugar and sea salt. And then I found um, some of these fun nuts from, these are the kettle cooked honey glazed pecans from yeah. the produce department. And then of course these beautiful hydroponic strawberries. So, so, so if, you, if, you, if you just tuned in, if you just joined us and you were doing like at, at a, kind of at a, like at a glance, what have we been over? Uh, yes. You miss Bernice talking about all the great cheeses. All this stuff is going to be on our website. Charlotte's yes. going over. She's building a charcuterie board. Uh, she's talking about all the great things you can have on there, whether it's, um, you know, like things with likes or, you know, the opposite yes. track kind of thing. There's, there's a lot of different things you can do with building a charcuterie board. There's no right or wrong way. No right or wrong. Um, it's kind of building what you like, built to your taste. Um, the other things we're going to say is, Priscilla, Priscilla, you do not need to say sorry for all the questions. This is the reason why yes. we're doing this. This is the reason why we have Bernice and Charlotte. Like, these, these are experts that we want you guys to ask questions because we literally want to be a resource for you guys during the holidays and then throughout the entire year to, when you ask a question, we want to be able to answer it. We want to be able to set you up for success because the biggest thing we want you guys to, to, to get out of these classes for sure is that anybody can do this. Anybody. I, we literally have failed our ways through, I think, any number of things and learned the best way to do it. So we want you to be able to not have to fail as many times as we did if we're going to show you through our mistakes, which I think right. is the best, best way to learn anything. But the, no, this is literally like it's a charcuterie class. It's kind of a, a little bit of physiology of taste. There's a lot of great flavors going on. There's great recipes. Everything is available on the website. Bernice is furiously answering questions in the chat. So if you have a question, uh, she's, she will answer it as fast as her fingers can type. There's been some great questions. Um, but yeah, so as, as, as kind of like where we are at a glance, we are still building. Uh, the, still the building. Tray. I'm about to add. So I'm adding, adding some finishing touches um, Cindy wants to, to know, this what guy. Did you just put in the bowl? So well, in was, the bowl, well, this was actually ranting. our finished um, jam, right? That's or the jam. jelly, the reduction. And you can see some Perfect. of those those candied lemons and those jalapenos. You can oh, see how so thick good. it got too. It's beautiful, to right? You cheese. can actually like glaze this on some like jalapeno poppers or like some chicken wings and it's like dynamite. And now I'm going to add in, I'm adding truffles. So I'm going to do the Central Market or the HEB Organics um, chocolate truffles because I think they're super wonderful and super tasty. And I'm just adding little sweet treats, right? So just something, a little nosh, a little sweet treat here. And then should we add, do y'all want to see some, like, some little gherkins, some cornichon, or do y'all want to see olives? Jeanette wanted to know, is there a preferred berry? I love strawberries. So strawberries to me are um, king because they come with their own little, you know, holder. They're beautiful, vibrant, they do, yeah. and when you cut them in, when you cut them in half, they have this whole other like. Blueberries might be kind of hard because they may roll around the. They table. roll around, and then raspberries always um, get smashed. So another thing, another tip is that when I make a charcuterie board or a grazing board, is that it's 360, right? I make a beautiful 360 because when you put it on the table, maybe it's the coffee table or the island, it's, um, people are gonna be walking around it, right? So I like it to be beautiful all the way around. All right, and then, so something crispy, right? Heather asks, do... should you always have compost on the side or can you even pre-drizzle the honey compost or et cetera on the cheese part Absolutely, you could absolutely do, um, you could pre-drizzle, um, but what you wanna make sure is, and people sometimes do honeycomb, things like that, you wanna make sure that maybe you put it in a separate dish, sort of the way you would with a blue cheese, because you don't want that flavor to get onto everything, right? And this particular jelly is really spicy, and so maybe there's like a kid or someone who is adverse to spice, but that's a really good question. DC, you have a good comment. You said about how much the ingredients on the board we're using cost-wise. So this is, so for us, we're not really worried about the cost, we're just trying to show everybody a kind of what's yeah. possible. So typically, you can build a charcuterie board, and I think would say, with anything you want. So find the ingredients, what, figure out what you want to spend on your charcuterie board. Grab the meat you want to spend, grab the cheeses, grab the fruits, grab whatever, and then build it based off of that. Um, but it doesn't have to be expensive to be mm -hmm. good. I think, you know, it's whatever to your taste you want to do. I mean, there's, I mean, we've done one where we've done beef jerky and something. we did like a couple of different like So absolutely, are, right? And I have um, one that I was, um, we absolutely, we ran out of time, but it was sort of like, you know, a more comprehensive or rustic Texas type board. So you could do grilled sausages and jalapeno poppers and this beautiful cheddar cheese and maybe do like small little biscuits or something like that. Toast. Chef, the cracker you're using, they want to know that's so the uh, Parmesan So these are Parmesan though, right? crisps. I got these in the deli. They come in a, like a container just like this. You could also purchase the whisks or the, um, you know, baked cheese. And I just like these because it's like a fun crunchy and it still is in that vein of cheese. 
Debbie, I don't think it's ever wrong to use a flavored cracker like a rosemary cracker. Not at all. What? Not at all. I think that's a that's a wonderful, right. wonderful, wonderful question. Can I add a little something to that? Yeah. So if you have a cheese that you really want to taste or meats that you really want to taste, you would steer away from tasting the cracker first before you huh. try that product. But yeah, you cannot go wrong with adding some different types of crackers. But I always go with like, if I'm trying to taste cheese, I'm doing a cheese tasting yeah. alone and I need to taste the cheese for what it yeah. is. I always use a plain water cracker, a plain toast or wheat. Okay. And something like that. But yeah, for, for fun though, you want to add those elements of texture yeah. and flavors and stuff. So that's a really good point. So if you were doing sort of like a pairing or a tasting to stay away. Good, good so point. So questions here. So yep. uh, how long can you leave the board out and the board okay. you're using, is it a cutting board or a yep. serving board? So this is actually a cutting board or a carving board. It actually on this side has the little um, moat the juice right for the um, for the meats uh, or the juices from the meat, but um, I just thought it was really beautiful board by itself. I just thought it had a beautiful color. It had sort of some texture to it, and I was a really big fan of it. I'm glad you asked this question. So we have a question about what's all the items on the lower side of the main camera, which is all the which is what Bernice was talking about earlier. Those big wheels, if I'm getting that correct, that's the question you're asking. What are all those big wheels? That is actually that family of cheese from. From Holland. From Holland. From Holland. Yeah, they Those come in at 20 to 26 pound wheels of cheese. Uh, just like that, they come to our store and we fresh cut it into the size that our average customer is asking for that is coming into. And they're from Holland, right? They're from Holland. I just want to know, I just want you to know too, in full disclosure, I did try to steal one of those wheels. I walked out <laughs> with it and realized it was fake and I was very upset. But it was probably better so. to stop me from committing a crime. So I'm, I'm, I feel very. He did. He put it that. under his like his coat. <laughs> so at this point right now, now I'm just filling in the gaps, right? And I'm just sort of like adding in some of these nuts and I'm making sure that I've got a beautiful 360. So no matter which way you look. And then... Arnold, great, great point. He said he used a mirror as well. We've done a lot of mirrors. Mirror's a great way to do that. Ooh. Good touch, Arnold. Yes. Oh, I... Arnold. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> mirrors right. are great because it also creates you know, this effect every time, you know, somebody goes to grab something, they're like, somebody else is grabbing the other side. Or is that just me? That may just be me. So then I'm just going to add in the cheese knives. And um, I think Bernice might have mentioned that you want to make sure that you use a different knife for each cheese, sort mm -hmm. of in the same line with the rosemary cracker. Um, so that way you don't muddle all the flavors or mix too many things. What about popcorn? That's the question. Yes. Why wouldn't you want to have popcorn? They put cheddar on popcorn all the Pork time. Pork rind, popcorn. All right, so Priscilla wants to know, what's the ballpark price of where you're at? I have a guess of my ballpark price, but since you put it all together, you, you guess first. <laughs> I literally think Priscilla, with everything she has up there, the breadsticks are not very expensive. The feta cheese nope. and the olives, like there. So like maybe everything all totaled, uh, 45 Close to 45 50 dollars okay bucks, probably. that's pretty fair with that's everything pretty fair the cheeses are not pretty, that expensive pretty fair it's pretty fair yeah, I couldn't so give you a total but put those items in your cart find out I'm just kidding <laughs> I'm just kidding everyone so basically I want to do a spin do you think I could do a spin on this and y'all could see how it looks like 360 so like it looks beautiful from like all angles, right? And you can see some of the like different like. What's our time, Tompkins? Got about uh, six minutes. A Andrea said I spent fifty dollars on cheese alone. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, I'm gonna say that's what? not a bad thing. I'm, I think I'm, yeah, is I'm the on my way to graze on. Cheese. I'll bring wine. I'll bring wine. Go. And then of course, like so, here would be your board, right? And it's absolutely beautiful. I've got a you know a fun little like the spoke spoon in there, and some fun little like you know a little bowl. And then here's our our um, marinated feta. And then I would just sort of put this out there like that, boop. And if you wanted to, you could add crostini, right? There's no right or wrong way to do any of this, right? So really, it's like following the rule of odds making sure that you have a variety of textures and flavors, something sweet to balance the salty, something acidic to balance the, the fat, that kind of thing. And then like, you know, you'd put something really cute like this, like these are also 34th and Main, also which I think are really cute. ATP? I see it, I want it. I asked Santa <laughs> for it. And I said earlier, I'm Santa, so I buy it for myself. Our Charlotte's um, tips are back up on the screen so you can see them there. So I, I have another question. Um, 
So if somebody doesn't want to build this, you will, of course, go to their house and build yes, this for them. Yes, I will. That's something I we will can, go okay, to your house you and build it for you. Um, but I have something here to show you. So I obviously wanted to be able to show you the other board, but we're going to run out of time. But this one is absolutely fantastic. So these are what you can pick up in store right here. So ready to go. So this one right here is the brie with some dried fruit and then of course some chocolates and this one is a blue and this one's a little more you know exotic and maybe for the adventurous eater and then this one is just like this is that artisan cheddar it has some of the uh, I believe it's um, chorizo in there the Spanish chorizo or um, and then of course some more dried fruit and these are wonderful so basically like you can do it yourself and make it any way you want it and be very like and just sort of have fun with it um, or you could be like me sometimes, and you could buy it already made. <laughs> and this is also a beautiful gift to arrive at somebody's house with. Charlotte, question. Are, can you use, what other jams would you recommend besides using just honey if they don't want to use honey like on their cheese or like a thing like that? What, what other jams so, would go um, well with? You could really use, there's, there's no limit, right? So you could do any kind of, um, any kind of jelly. There's a, there's a myriad of different jams. People use raspberry jam, blackberry jam. Um, the Cooking Connection has... Um, I believe it's Robert's Reserve or Robert's Rothschild. They have a, a variety of different like pepper jams and spicy jams and sweet jams. That's a great. And then, like seriously, y'all, there's a tried and true raspberry chipotle. We sell it because it's a good. It, it, it works, and that's a really good one because it balances that sweet and that smoky, um, which is really fun too. Uh, so many things, uh, Andrea. First of all, you have a dehydrator and plan on using uh, dried fruits from your yard. Can you drop some off when you dehydrate them down here at the Culinary Center? I'll just give you the address and you can do that. Yep. Um, the other, we had some questions about any fancy veggies that can be added um, that you can throw in there. And the other question was, we, which we talked about, funny enough, we were at earlier at an HCB grabbing some extra stuff for the actual class. And Charlotte goes, should I make a dessert board? And I discouraged her. He discouraged me. Which is unbelievable now because it is a great idea. You like, know, guys, I'm not kidding. Like I made jalapeno poppers to like make a jalapeno popper and smoke sausage board. And Tompkins was like, you're not gonna have time. I'm just kidding, he didn't actually say that. <laughs> so yes, dessert board. Yeah, it's one of those um, things that's really, really good. So we'll stick around for a couple more moments to ask any questions. I hope you guys um, had a lot of fun um, joining us. A big shout out to Bernice for teaching us all about cheese and Scott yeah, Tompkins Bernice, for best. moderating oh, for us. Um, all the recipes should be um, online. And if you guys have any questions, we'll stick around for a few more moments. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank much you. And be sure to join us for the next classes coming up. There's more all throughout the month of December. Just Saturday, we are doing, Saturday, we are doing a kids cooking slash cookie decorating. Should be fun. I will be here to moderate and also eat and taste test the cookies. Yes. Thanks for joining, guys. Bye.